Hello everyone, so I want to make a quick video on how to unfold characters or do your UVing work inside of ZBrush. And normally I wouldn't necessarily recommend using, you know, a, maybe a sculpting application for something like this, but since ZBrush 4 came out, it's very quickly in my personal pipeline become the fastest um, tool that I've ever used. Um, a lot of people are not that, um, don't spend a lot of time on kind of investigating fast, the fastest way to do UV work. I've done some other videos on creating UVs in Maya. I personally know five professional unfolding applications um, like Hedis, which is quite old at this point, um, Unfold 3D, which is a phenomenal application for unfolding. Uh, it's also about a thousand dollars. That's a pretty amazing application. But even this, ZBrush has, I've literally, I will open up ZBrush just to unfold something that I've modeled in Maya now. Um, there's nothing faster. Um, and the algorithm is fantastic. Actually, it's way better than Max, it's better than Maya, um, and it's definitely part of my pipeline now, even if I didn't create something inside of ZBrush. Uh, now this is Sid, the turtle. He's one of my favorite little characters that I did really quick one day, and he's kind of always, I'm using him for demos and stuff quite a bit. Um, he's a pretty simple character, um, but I want to just go over the process of how you would very, very quickly and by quick I mean in let's say three minutes, unfold this character. Uh, so the first thing you want to do, um, I assume you know how to make poly groups. Um, making poly groups is essential. Each poly group is basically a UV island or UV shell, depending on what terminology you use. Um, I'm not going to go over how to make poly groups, it's pretty, pretty basic, but um, you should have individual poly groups based on where you want your UV islands to be, which I've already done this. And you can do this in Maya or Max. Um, and you can also do it manually inside of ZBrush. Once you've designated those UV islands, we're going to open up our... Actually, let me turn my paint off on this guy. So there he is. He's naked. He's got nothing. Uh, first thing we want to do is go into our Z plugin. Pop it over to the right-hand side. By default, probably everything will be closed. I want to open UV Master. And now without doing anything, I actually on a lot of meshes, you can just press unwrap and see what it's going to do for you. Um, now this is something that I made inside of ZBrush. It has different layers um, and it also has uh, different geometry levels. So the first thing I need to do is say work on clone. Basically when I press work on clone that's going to get rid of all the extra unnecessary things that it doesn't need. After all, I do not want to unfold a 5 million polygon character. I want to do it to the base mesh. So the first thing you need to do is say work on clone. And that's going to do a couple of things. It's going to spit this out for you. Again, let me just turn off my paint. It's going to spit out the base resolution mesh for you. And here it is. And it retained the poly groups that we had previously assigned. Now, really easily, if I want, let's just to give you an example, I will press unwrap. Um, you have a couple two really quick options. You have symmetry, which I'm going to go ahead and keep that depressed, and poly groups. Now I have polygroups, it's basically asking me, do you want to keep um, the polygroup assignments? Yes, I do want to keep those. Um, each one of those is going to be its own UV island. Now with me doing nothing, I'm not going to set any seams or do anything, I'm just going to say unwrap. And it's done very quickly, you might not have even seen it, but a little orange bar shot across the top. Now once I want to see what my UVs look like, I'm going to press flatten, and there we go. Um, this is actually a 3D view, I can rotate these. So without me doing anything, let's unflatten this now. And I just want to show you what this spat out. Let me load a texture. Here's our texture. So that was, a, I don't know, 15 seconds of work. We have a fully UV'd character as well as UV islands. Now let's say we don't like what it automatically chose. This is a very symmetrical character. It's got very big, fat, basic shapes. This isn't necessarily indicative of a complicated character that you might want to do. So let's say it chose to put UV seams in locations you did not want and you wanted to fix that. First of all, if you want to actually view your UV seams, um, yes you can press flatten and view its result. I'm going to press unflatten to come back. But also I can say check seams and you'll notice right here I can say check seams and it'll show me where it chose to cut my character. And I can uncheck that. Now let's say I didn't like that. Let's say I want to 
manually do that. So to, to manually create my seams, and this is why this is really, really fast. Um, very, very quickly, I'm just going to press Enable Control Painting. And then I'm, I have three options. I can erase, attract, or protect. Um, usually I just say protect, and it's just the areas that I want to protect. And all I'm saying to ZBrush is, I don't want you to put a seam anywhere on this guy's face, because the face is important. And you don't have to be specific about this either. And maybe I want to protect the body. Let me turn off my floor really quick. I don't care about the, his back because that's where the shell is going to be. So I'm going to press attract and I'm going to attract a seam here. And now again, I don't need to be very specific with this. I can just very quickly put these strokes. And now I know I want seams on the inside of the legs, so I'll just press this somewhere close. And likewise with the back leg. Done. Essentially what I've done is just create all of my UV seams. And now I'm going to press unwrap again. It's done. I'm going to press flatten. Now it gave me a different result. And this is the result that I wanted. Um, let's press unflatten. Turn my texture on. And there we go. Now there are times where a ZBrush might disagree with you. You say I want to protect this and it will choose to put a seam there anyway. Um, listen to the program when it tells you that because it's basically telling you this is not the best place to, to do this. You're not unfolding it right and I'm going to kind of override your decision. It's going to make its best attempt to do what you've asked it to do. But if you make a bad decision, um, it'll still sometimes put something. There we go. It'll sometimes put a seam where you've not asked it to go. So, okay, I said protect the face, which it did. I said protect the belly, which it did. I asked for seams to be put on the inside of the legs, which it did, and I asked for a seam to be put along the back. Now, what I did not ask it to do was put a horizontal seam across its butt. It chose to do that, but it also did 90% of the other things that I asked it to do. Um, I'm very happy with this. This character is done. Now I'm going to copy the UVs. I'm going to go to my high-res sculpt of Sid, and I'm going to press Paste UVs. And he is done. Let me just turn off colorize. So I've basically just pasted the uh, UVs onto the high-res sculpt now, and I can continue on with my life. And just to prove, you know, of course, that yes, it does work, let me step down to my base level, and I'm going to press Go Z to go into Maya, continue, here's my turtle, here's my UVs, everything's symmetrical, it's perfect, any very easy basic UV manipulation can still be done in Maya if you choose to, and you are done. Okay, so let's do something a little bit more complicated and change our workflow just a bit, um, which is probably the second type of workflow that you would have. The first one, which uh, where we used Sid the Turtle, uh, that was a ZBrush workflow where I've lived and died inside of ZBrush and I kind of only used Maya once I was done. Now let's say you've lived inside of Maya and now you're at a point where you need to UV. Um, this is something I sculpted and retopoed. It's asymmetrical. There's more polygons. It's quite a bit more complicated. Um, I've just simply applied a planar map to this guy. Now all I want to do in Maya, and in terms of getting this ready, which you do not have to do by the way, um, I can designate polygroups inside of ZBrush, but I don't think that that's the fastest way to do it given the amount of polygons um, and trying to select edge loops and stuff can be difficult, you know, like under the armpit and everything. So we'll just do it really quickly in here. Um, just through the use of a couple hot keys or maybe you can double click your edge loops. I'm going to select my edge loops and I'm going to press this little scissor image here, which is cut. And you know what, let me turn something on really quick. Make sure you guys can see my seams. There we go. So I've created a UV seam here. And now I'm just going to repeat this process anywhere that I want to seam. 
And now these seams, all I'm doing really is designating what are going to be polygroups. And the only reason I'm choosing to do it in Maya is because selecting the edge loops in Maya is actually pretty easy. It's a hell of a lot easier than using ZBrush. So I'm just cutting his feet, his hands, his wrists. Um, let's do his hips really quick. Cut. Cut. And last but not least, let's do the head. Make sure this went all the way around. There we go. Cut. Now cutting this isn't enough. Uh, you do actually need to separate these UV islands from each other, you know, like this or something. Um, so a fast way to do that would be packing it. Oops, let's go back, sorry. We can select our whole character and pack um, using this here, just to kind of get everyone away from it, each other. Let me just do this. Actually, that's a horrible pack job. I'm surprised it did that so bad. I think my pack setting is probably allowing overlays or something, so. And there we go. So obviously this guy's not properly UV'd, um, but he does have UV islands designated. Let me just do this really quick. So we're done with our Maya part for now. I'm just going to delete my history to make sure everything's clean. I'm going to go Z into Maya. This is an old one. I was just testing this. Um, so this is what we just go Z'd into. Now I need to designate my polygroups. So you have an option under polygroups called auto groups with UV. If I press that, it's going to recognize those different UV islands and make each UV island its own polygroup, which is what I want. Now doing nothing more than this, we can actually unfold this right now without doing a single thing. Um, there's no subdivision levels, so we don't need to work on a clone. We can simply just press unwrap if we want. It's done unwrapping and I can flatten it. And this is the result that it shows. Let's unflatten this and apply texture. And there we go. So by doing nothing other than selecting some UV islands, we actually just UV'd this in, you know, five seconds, ten seconds, um, including the texture time or the time to select the UV seams, you know, two minutes maybe. Um, now obviously let's change this a bit because maybe it chose to do some things we didn't want it to do. Now this is where it chose to put seams. This is a fantastic set of choices that it made on an asymmetrical object. Um, but I don't like that it put this here on the face. I'm actually pretty happy with everything else. So let's uh, just make a couple small changes. And the reason we're able to see this, remember, is because I have check seams turned on. If I turn this off, it'll hide those. So now I want to protect the face. Hopefully it does. Do, do, do. And the ear. I want to protect the chest. And the rest, I kind of don't care about that much. I'm going to attract seams along the inside of the thigh. And I don't actually care that I'm following an exact edge loop. I'm just painting blue. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Because I don't have time. I don't want a UV. I don't care. And I want there to be a seam down his back somewhere. There we go. Done. So we want to acknowledge polygroups. I can turn off symmetry because it's not symmetrical. So I just want to acknowledge polygroups, and I'm going to say unwrap.
And now we should get a slightly different result this time. I'm going to flatten so we can view. And we did get a different result. And this is actually really good. Um, the main culprit I really wanted to, to fix this time was the face. And the face is now symmetrical. It's been UV'd. It kept the ears. It kept the mouth. Let's unflatten this. Let's turn our texture on. And there we go. Done. Unbelievably quick. Uh, let's just check our UV seams that it chose for us. Now it did everything that I asked. It put the seams on the inside of the thighs, inside of the arms. The only thing it did on its own was it split the top of the head a little bit, which is exactly what I would have wanted it to do anyway. And it chose to cut the shoulders just to achieve a better unfold. And that's it. And it's just a few seconds. I mean, you can unfold the whole character really quickly. Um, and especially if you're painting inside of ZBrush, you know, having a couple of seams in a, a location that you might not like on the fingers or something isn't really that big of a deal because you're painting in 3D anyway. So, so there you go. That's it. UVs in ZBrush. Who would have thought? Thanks.